Hello, Thrive Loud listeners. At Thrive Loud, we are always connecting you, the listener, with amazing leaders that are thriving in their lives, their businesses, and their passions. We also have had hundreds of thriving women that have been featured on this podcast. Continuing this important effort, Thrive Loud with Lou Diamond, Success.com, and Clubhouse have joined together to create a special series called Elevating the Brilliant Minds of Women. You'll get a chance to learn about these incredible initiatives of women across the globe, hear about how they are thriving, and how you can connect with them today. Enjoy this amazing conversation, and after the episode, learn more about this powerful initiative. Think big, think positive. Never show any sign of weakness. Always go for the throat. Buy low, sell high. Fear, that's the other guy's problem. Nothing you have ever witnessed will prepare you for the absolute carnage you're about to witness. It's Thrive Loud with Lou Diamond. Get ready to thrive loud with Lou Diamond. Welcome, everyone, to another episode of Thrive Loud with Lou Diamond, connecting you to the most inspiring and amazing people who are thriving each and every day. I'm your host, Lou Diamond. Today on Thrive Loud, we have a Texas attorney turned empowerment speaker and coach. She is the founder of the Self Love Challenge and emphasizes the importance of self love, confidence, and courage. Her message is a kind reminder to make empowering choices that help you believe in yourself more and love yourself without conditions. Part of our continuing series on elevating the brilliant minds of women, Thrive Loud listeners, Brandy Wilson Edwards. Brandy, how are you today? I am doing fabulous. I'm here with you. So it is a great start to my day. Thrive Loud listeners need to know that Brandy is so on brand, as you can tell from the podcast artwork. Uh, She is literally wearing her pink. She's got it all decked out. She looks literally like what you would expect her to see. And I guess that just that's a lot of wardrobe consistency of pink. Has that always been your color? (laughs) You know, looking back, I realized I I've always loved pink and I just started embracing it a little bit more. I feel like when I was younger, I thought, well, maybe it's too feminine or too girly if I wear it. And then at some point I woke up and I just decided I'm going to rock this. And so I, I wear it at every conference, speaking event, and I'm always on brand. Self-love. I want to understand, I guess, and let our listeners hear it from you, how this kind of became your gig. Uh, you can give a little bit of the traditional, hey, this is how I moved into this line of work, not for all the way from the womb. We don't want to go back that far. Uh, but I think our listeners would love to hear how this kind of became what you're focused on each day. Self-love for me really started by me reaching a place where I was able to accept myself in the moment without conditions. And for so many years, I was always attaching my happiness or my worthiness or how I felt about myself to my physical appearance and thought Mm -hmm. once I achieve this new goal, or once I can fit into this size clothing, then I will feel happier or uh, be able to look at myself and love myself more. And what happened is I was falling short every single time. And my self-love journey began intentionally. I didn't know that I really lacked it. I just felt like my feelings and thoughts about myself were normal. And I started going to hot yoga and it completely transformed my life. I went in there to challenge myself and become a little bit leaner. But really what happened is I was able to see myself differently by listening to the yoga instructor that I loved and applying her inspirational words on and off the bat. And Mm -hmm. I started showing up on social media, sharing my journey. And what I realized is I was relating to so many people and people were messaging me saying how they felt similar or they were inspired by what I was doing and how I was showing up. And I realized I'm onto something here. And my approach to self-love is is that it is a lifestyle. It's really a choice in everything that we do and do not do. And it's a lot more than just our physical appearance. And it's a lot more than our, our mindset, but really our life and how we show up and how we can choose to love ourselves while we work on ourselves, which means we love ourselves during the work, not after it. Where do you think that previous view of the way you looked at making yourself feel happy started from? Was it, was it just, just growing up in the environment you were in or just you know the natural competitiveness of, of life or the way things are? Where do you think that, that original issue that really wasn't the right view for yourself and for many people 
uh, began. How do you think? I've always tried to unearth where that starts because this this is this is common across across the globe. So I love try, trying to dig in as to seeing where do you think the starting point was. Fortunately, I did not grow up with social media, so I cannot imagine the the youth and and how they are struggling right now with so many different things related to self love. But for me, it really started by just seeing people in my life and women that I, that I looked up to and admired and hearing how they might talk about themselves or magazines. When I got older, uh, just how girls can be competitive and compare themselves to each other. And again, kind of going back to real, really thinking that this was normal because so many conversations that I heard women have when I was younger. And then so many conversations that I was having with girls my age when I was younger, and even as an adult, were really centered on kind of like this lack of being enough. And that ripple effect that you can have when someone has a negative comment that they say about themselves and someone chimes in, they're like, oh, me too. And it just felt normal. And then I realized this is enough, enough is enough. And I'm going to, if I can choose negative thoughts, I can also choose positive thoughts. If I can make disempowering choices, I can also make empowering choices. And it's really a process. I'm still evolving in my self-love journey, but I'm so much further than where I used to be. And so I'm very passionate about helping people strengthen or even begin their own journey. Brandy, we've had a lot of people who have somewhere in their title, attorney turned blank, <laughs> meaning they started out as an, focusing on the law and then moved into something else. Uh, I know a lot of people in that space. And, and I guess my, my first question is, are you still involved um, as a practicing attorney or you're non-practicing at this point? I am currently practicing okay. and I realize that I can be an attorney and a speaker. When I first started out, I thought I needed to be one or the other, but I've really embraced being both. However, my passion right now is in the speaking space. So I want to go here because this is something that I, I, I've had this conversation for a long time. Um, also because I think my wife used to be a, le a lawyer and a legal recruiter, and she helped a lot of unhappy attorneys figure out the next piece. And, and the law teaches you what could possibly go wrong as opposed to you know what could be right. That's what lawyers look out for, all the, the, the bad sides of it. And you're focused on a real positive component of the self-love. Do you see that dichotomy between the fact that you know, no matter what aspect of it is, even if it's you know doing contract law or deal making, you're always looking out for a mistake or an error, whereas in the side that you're focused on, the other side of what you're speaking about, you're thinking about the positiveness, importance, confidence, courage, moving up. Do you see this dichotomy and this challenge between the two? Absolutely. And in the, the legal space, we're preparing for the worst case scenario and yeah. hoping for the best case scenario. And I, I think it's so important that you touch on this because there are a lot of unhappy attorneys for a variety of different reasons. It's a demanding profession a stressful environment, very adversarial and um, very competitive and not always the most positive and a lot of burnout and stress with attorneys. And that's really how I've started speaking through my own unha unhappiness. I realized mm -hmm. I needed to change something. I didn't know if it was my career, if it was my area of practice. And I really sought out on this self-discovery journey that became quite epic and really found some new passions and purpose and prioritized a passion project that turned into a business. Yeah. Brandy, I love asking speakers this question. I'm a speaker myself and, and I've had many on this program and we featured it. And we started asking this question consistently of speakers because it's always really interesting. You know, you could plan out a message of what you're trying to deliver. And sometimes the things that connect with your audience uh, that you think are going to be like the pop moments. Are, there's different ones that that react. Sometimes other moments get what I like to call the aha moment. Whether I know we've been mostly virtual over the last year and we're starting to get back more in person, but when you speak and you deliver your message, what is the aha moment on the message you deliver that seems to resonate the most with your audience? I would say the aha moment that a lot of people have is after I share a story where I'm very vulnerable and share the biggest failure I ever experienced in my entire life and, and how I felt so defined by that moment. And then I had a friend pass away a few weeks later and it just really opened up my eyes on, I have an opportunity to try and 
start again and to see failure as feedback. And, and I was given another opportunity to wake up this morning. And that really seems to resonate with audiences to shift their perspective on fear, on failure, and really show up in the world as the most confident version of themselves. And I love empowering them to be really courageous. And so I feel like when I share that, they have a lot of those aha moments of my time here is limited and I need to do something today when I leave this presentation that's going to positively impact my life and potentially the lives of others. I like it. I wanted to ask one more question uh, digging on this, and that is uh, obviously a lot of your message relates to a lot of women in your audience. I'm looking at some of your, your, your the, who you speak to, um, but there are also many men in there. Can, can you talk about, obviously, does your message uh, apply on both sides? Is it, is it swaying? Do you find that more people, uh, that you, do you find that more women are in search of self-love than men? I think more women are more openly in search of it, but okay. men definitely are, I think in a space where they need it. And a lot of them are realizing that. And, I have found it very interesting how many men have reached out to me on social media to tell me that they like my posts and my content, even though it's branded with a lot of pink, because <laughs> for so long, I thought really my market was women. But what I realized from these men being vulnerable is this is something that everyone needs. And it's not just self-love in the sense of how we feel about our physical appearance, but really showing up in the world is the most confident and courageous version of ourselves. And both men and women need that. And so I'm in an interesting space where I do speak to a lot of women, but I am speaking to attorneys now and business professionals that have both men and women. And it's not always specifically centered around self-love because I love to talk about courage and confidence and stress management, and I don't fit into a box. And so I don't really identify with having that one avatar, that one audience that I only speak to and really being um, open-minded to where my message goes, who it speaks to, and how it evolves over time. Brandy, we connected in a clubhouse room. And yeah, before we uh, hit record on this episode, uh, you were talking about the fact that you know, you're, you're constantly in it and, and it's, it's almost addictive. Uh, talk about how you're communicating your message within that space or, and, and, and in the other digital spaces, I guess, on how you're delivering this, because uh, it's, pretty, it's pretty poignant. And I guess you, you got to be in like a happy space when you're in there, right? Because it's such a great interactive chat room, for lack of a, a better term for those who aren't familiar with Clubhouse or are not yet in it. Yes, Lou, I am obsessed with Clubhouse because as a speaker, as someone who loves helping people and empowering people, I can just log on, go into a room or create my own room and people are instantly there. And especially in light of 2020, people want connection. People want to be heard and to to be seen and to share their stories. And I am thriving because I don't have to get ready. I don't have to have a setup or anything like that to put out any content. And I can just show up as I am, meet people where they're at and just speak spontaneously. And really how you were talking earlier, when we go into speaking engagements and we, we maybe have something that we have prepared that we want to share and it can shift depending on if there's Q and a or what's resonating with the audience and, and feeling a little bit more on that and being intuitive in these rooms, you might have an intention on, on what the room topic is going to be about, but then someone shares their perspective or it shifts in a certain way. And so it keeps me on my toes of really being uh, able to respond to what people say and how they say it. So I, I love it. It's mm. such an incredible platform to collect, uh, to collaborate with people and connect with like-minded, ambitious people. Brandy, I love asking coaches this question. I'm very curious to see where this goes. Uh, we are like, you know, on most days here on this lovely podcast, we're chatting, we're having fun. And, and like you, you're thriving in both your, your legal career and obviously your speaking career, which is awesome. But we all have days when we're not quite kicking on all cylinders. We're, we're a little off our game. Brandy, when you have trouble thriving, who or what practice do you seek to get yourself back on the thriving track? I have a few different things that I do. One, I have an album that I created on my iPhone and it's, I titled it Positive Praise. And what I do whenever I receive an amazing testimonial, 
something from a, a coaching client or just positive feedback on a post that I shared, or even these clubhouse rooms that I'm doing, how my words are resonating with people. I take a screenshot of that and I put it in that folder and I save it for a rainy day. Whenever I doubt myself, whenever I'm letting fear get the best of me and need a little boost of you know, courage or confidence, I, I read those to let myself know that what I'm doing is important and I need to show up. And then I also, I have a, a group of belief builders and I have, you know, mentors and friends that really can encourage me and, and lift me whenever I need that. So that's what I do. I love it. Brandy, let's do the admin part of the show. Share with the listeners, all the places people can find you, websites, URLs, social media, stuff like that, your clubhouse handle, whatever you want. We will put it all in the show notes. Uh, It always gets more engagement when they hear from you. I love this. Thank you for the opportunity. My website is selflovechallenge.com. My email address for anyone who's interested in potentially having me speak to their group or company is the selflove challenge at gmail.com. My clubhouse handle is Brandy Edwards. My Instagram handle is the selflove challenge. Love it. Brandy, you ready to go down Fun Street with me here on Thrive Lab? Absolutely. Okay. We love starting Fun Street off with talking about what your favorite movie is. Do you have a movie that you like to share with our listeners that you love to see? Of course. Dirty Dancing. I watched it every single weekend on a VHS recorded at my grandmother's house when I was younger. I love it. <laughs> and why does that movie connect so much with you? I love dance and it's just such a beautiful story. And, you know, the iconic scene at the end when uh, Johnny, which is Patrick Swayze, walks in and he says, nobody puts baby in the corner. I've always (laughs) really thought like I've internalized that. And I'm like, nobody puts Brandy in the corner. And if nobody puts me in the front, I'm going to walk up to the front. I think you just named this episode, by the way. Nobody puts Brandy (laughs) in the corner. we'll, We'll talk about that afterwards. Let's do it. All righty. Now we're going to do the speed around the fun street. And this is how this works, Brandy. I am going to ask you something. And I want the first thing that comes to your mind. These are things that make you feel good, that lift you up, that motivate you, that make you thrive. Okay. Ready to rock and roll? Yes. Okay. A song you love to hear or that pumps you up? Madonna's Like a Prayer. A favorite food that's not a dessert? Vegan tacos. A favorite dessert? Anything caramel. Oh, I like that. An activity you wish you did more of? Dancing. An activity you wish you did less of? A little less social media. (laughs) Brandy, if you could snap your fingers and go anywhere in the world, where are you? I would be at a yoga retreat in Greece. Ooh, (laughs) that's specific fun. And I like that idea. That sounds awesome. And and I would, I'd pick summertime too, to do that. I wouldn't get to enjoy it. Brandy Wilson Edwards, truly a pleasure to have you on Thrive Loud. Uh, everybody check out all the links to Self Love Challenge and uh, nobody puts Brandy in a corner. I love that. <laughs> totally thank you so much, here. Lou. You got it. And to all our listeners out there, thank you for joining us. And until next time, keep thriving onward and upward. And remember, be brief, be bright, be gone. Thanks for listening to the special episode of Thrive Loud with Lou Diamond, brought to you by success.com and Thrive Loud. To learn more about this great program and elevating the brilliant minds of women, head on over to thriveloud.com or success.com. And make sure to follow Lou at Thrive Loud everywhere on social media to learn more about this special series. Thanks for listening.